Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and I'm a content producer and today I'm talking with Adam who just graduated from the University of California, Irvine. Uh, he is, the, the reason I'm talking with him today is because he is was part of the UCI Smash Ultimate team and a Captain Falcon main and I wanted to get his insights onto what being a collegiate esports athlete is like. So to begin with, did you have any sort of esports program or club in your high school? Yeah, so um, we had a gaming club at my high school but it wasn't really um, kind of targeted towards esports. Although there was like games like League of Legends that we played there and Smash, um, it was more of a casual approach to it. Um, we did eventually um, use the club to kind of find players and make teams for HSL, which is the uh, high school star league, mm -hmm. which was a big tournament for high schools at the time. And maybe that was the only experience I had with esports within my high school. But besides that, the, the club was a very you know, chill place for gamers to hang out. Awesome. So that got you a lot of practice on your own and some competitive experience. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a good experience for me. I, I'm not sure if it was exactly practice, but it was a good way to you know meet other people in my school who played and then maybe play with them when I get home and awesome. stuff like that. Definitely helped you stay engaged then. Yeah. And then can you tell me about your experience with the UCI esports application process? So yeah, the UC, uh, UCI esports application process was... Um, so it started with... Um, as you may know, it's a little different from League of Legends and Overwatch because uh, Smash is such a, a individual game where mm -hmm. you, you know, your own performance means everything, and it's a one v one kind of thing. Um, so instead of like a normal tryout or you know uh, something like that, we we took a different approach where um, they looked at the first month and a half of tournaments, and you know they kept an eye on um, those who performed well and you know, those who were winning the tournaments, who were placing top five, who was losing to who kind of thing was a big factor. And um, after that portion finished, they uh, moved on to an interview portion where they interviewed, I believe, 12 of us to see who was the best fit to kind of represent the organization. And then after that interview process, they let us know about a week later who had made the team. For, for that, uh, you're a Captain Falcon main. Um, yeah. Do they, does the team try to diversify what mains they have or just whoever has the skill to be there? So yeah, that was a, a big this like talking point we had as a team because um, if for those who don't know, the way um, our team, like the tournaments went for our team, it's 5v5 and you would go in like one at a time, you lose your stocks and then the next person comes in, loses stocks and like you keep going until it's like um, all five people are gone and then whoever the team that has remaining stocks wins mm -hmm. so um having characters for counter picks in certain situations is very important um in our team i feel like uh, there were like kind of a clear cut maybe top six or seven students and mm -hmm. players where um, we didn't have that as a big influence on our our choices but it definitely is um something to consider because yeah. captain falcon he He's kind of a character that everyone usually knows how to play against because he's very straightforward. So, like, in terms of crew battles, my character isn't the best, but I think I made up for that with uh, my, my playstyle. Okay, interesting. Um, now, what does, like, an average esports day with UCI Smash Team look like? Like, do you guys start with scrims, or do you just, you know, go at each other in 1v1s? Um, so a lot of us in general, even if it's not like a, a scheduled scrim day, we all kind of um, go to the esports arena, like in between classes or, you know, on a daily basis, and we'll play against each other there. For actual um, scheduled like, practices, mm -hmm. a big one for us was VOD review, where we would go through uh, old tournaments or um, maybe our uh, college crew battles, where we would look at it and kind of, as a group, maybe not critique, but kind of give insight on like why we did something or what, uh, like let's say if we're watching me play, my teammates would say, um, you know, maybe here playing this kind of style would be better and we would just kind of discuss about it for future events. Mm -hmm. That was the big one. And then we also did have scheduled practice where only we played with each other because typically in the esports arena, it's, it's open play so everyone can play against anyone. So, yeah. Okay, about how many days a week would you have that scheduled team practice? The scheduled team practice, uh, VOD review was once a week, and then we had um, team practice with one another once a week as well. And then basically the rest was um, kind of on our own. Like we were expected to practice a certain amount of hours every week about 
I believe six or six to eight hours a week and um, yeah, do like video review and all that on our own. So the only scheduled ones were the uh, VOD review and then playing against one another. Okay, awesome. Now, I know you graduated, but yeah. was it difficult kind of balancing earning a degree while being competitive? Honestly, I hear a lot of people say that it is. I personally don't think so because um, it was a hobby for me. Like I, it never really turned into kind of that like uh, like job or chore. Even though we did have like scheduled um, like team uh, practices and whatnot, mm -hmm. because you know like I have set amount of time for school, and then there's a set amount of time for you know my hobbies and stuff. So, so the Smash scholarship, scholarship thing kind of just filled the time of my hobbies, and it didn't really interfere with my school time. Awesome. So it sounds like you found a good degree of balance there. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Now, um, Smash Ultimate and in general, the fighting games are much smaller in scenes than Overwatch or League of Legends, especially when it comes to scholarships uh, across many schools. Do you think there's going to be a lot of fighting game opportunity, fighting game scholarship opportunities across the country? I'd hope so. Personally, for me, I think fighting games are harder to I guess it's harder for investors to get into like on an aggregate scale because it's not a team it's not it's harder to build a brand off of fighting games because it's one versus one and this also relates to scholarships and because at the end of the day it's investors and, and funding for the students because um, like you look at League of Legends and Overwatch they can build an identity for the specific team it's not just mm -hmm. the player Although certain players can transcend that, I think for fighting games, it's a little more tricky because it focuses on the individual rather than the team. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm skeptical, but I'm hopeful that they'll get into it because fighting games are starting to grow as an esports in general, too. So we'll no, I mean, I, I love the fighting game scene, so I hope so, too, definitely. Um, but with them being a bit rarer, what do you think players need to do to stand out amongst others when they're trying to get these scholarships or get on these teams that exist? Okay, so I think the biggest thing um, for scholarships, just be really good. You know, play <laughs> all the time. Uh, you know, go to tournaments. Show why you're like you can be a contender for like the top player at your school or your region or whatnot. Um, in terms of like actual professional teams. I think the biggest thing you can do is be marketable, like uh, build a brand for yourself, you know, use mm -hmm. social media. Um, it, I feel like, especially in Smash, where uh, the prize pools aren't the biggest, the mm -hmm. biggest thing you can do is, you know, build a fan base, um, market yourself, make a brand out of yourself, and then um, use that as a source of like, hey, look at me, um, you know, esports organizations, I'm like, even though they might not be the best, they're the biggest I mm -hmm. think. okay so definitely start like middle and high school start going to tournaments that are in your local area try to qualify for bigger tournaments and that'll help you on your path to getting on the teams yeah that and that's also the biggest way to get known like around your your areas just go to tournaments play a lot even if you're not the best you can improve at tournaments and you know you can meet people who can help you improve uh, i think the tournament scene is uh, really cool awesome uh, and then um since you, you just graduated, like we've, like we've said, uh, when you look back on your experience as this esports athlete, uh, what are like the highs and lows of it that you experienced? The highs, I would say, being able to travel a little bit. Um, although we didn't have the full school year to be able to do it, um, mm -hmm. we're fortunate enough that our um, donator uh, was affiliated with um, an airline company, I believe, and um, they were able to, you know hook us up with flights and stuff to tournaments and events. Awesome. So I was, oh, sorry. I was able to, um, you know, attend events that I normally wouldn't have gone to. Like what? And, uh, I was flown out to Genesis. And then um, I think some of my, they were talking about flying out to Frostbite, but it got canceled because of the coronavirus, unfortunately. Um, and uh, there was talks about being flown out to Boston for the, the national finals. Mm-hmm. So the only one I went to was uh, up in NorCal to um, Genesis, which which was really cool. It was a really big tournament, one of the biggest Smash tournaments uh, there is. Yeah, awesome. and then for um, Lowe's, I would say the application process was very, um, very uh, in, like frustrating. Maybe not frustrating, <laughs> stressful, but like uh, not frustrating. stressful, stressful. Yeah, yeah. Um, because for me, it was difficult because. Um, 
as you may know, the Smash Ultimate is a new game that just came out last year. And last year, I was study abroad, so I was gone. Oh. And like before that, I was a top player for Smash 4, the old game. And since I was gone, I guess everyone kind of like was sleeping on me and forgot <laughs> like that I could play. And then when I came back, I think not a lot of people believed in me, or a lot of people wanted to kind of... Uh, like brush you off? Yeah, I think so. Like I had to prove myself again. It, was, it seemed it seemed odd for me, at, um, considering that I was um, one of the top players for the old game. And there was times where I didn't think I would make the team. Like I felt like every win and every loss mattered so much in tournaments that it kind of not took the fun out, but it made things a lot more stressful. Like tournaments themselves are already stressful, but when you know that there's so much more weight on it, that there's a scholarship team and there's you know the organization organization like keeping a like a good eye on you mm-hmm. and how you perform. It it is a little is a little nerve wracking. I feel like and, <laughs> uh, it hurts me a little that. that you're saying uh, Smash uh, Four is the old one here, because <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on the original and Melee. So <laughs> I I loved Melee as well. Um, yeah, I played the original when I was four or five, and just for fun, Melee and Brawl. I loved those games. I didn't start playing seriously until Smash Bros. So that, that's what I mean. I <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> no, yeah, I love Melee. Melee was just, uh, that was the game that came out for me, and I loved that game. I never got nearly as good as you ever got, I'm sure, or, you know, to being as competitive, but it was fun, uh-huh. you know, wave dashing everywhere. And yeah, Melee's sick. It's, it's, it's a great game, and I got a little disappointed when they added, like, tripping over <laughs> in Brawl. Oh, that was awful, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Let me combo someone. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, but um, so kind of like the last couple of things, what would you say is the most valuable thing you took from your esports experience at UCI? The most valuable thing? Honestly, in terms of out of game, um, you know, the, the staff that supported us, um, that like uh, helped us with, you know, our day-to-day life, you know, checked in on us. Um, that was a big help for me. Uh, shout outs to Hillary for helping me with my resume and <laughs> building that. Because like, I, I was interested in taking this experience and kind of transferring as, as I am graduating, and I have graduated, to kind of take this experience and make it something that I can use in the future for careers. Mm-hmm. So that was a big uh, takeaway I had. And for in-game, I think the biggest takeaway was... Um, I guess growing as a team, you know, as Smash is very individualistic and um, having a team environment and where team, like a, a space where you can kind of, you know, elevate one another and push each other to be better. I think that was really fun to have. And I, that's prob- probably one of the biggest takeaways I had from it. Awesome. Well, uh, do you have any final thoughts or advice about the collegiate esports experience? Um, I would say for players who are trying to get better at any game they're playing, I think the biggest thing is to stay humble and to know that you can learn from anyone. Um, like as like one of the top Captain Falcon players, I'll look at like random Captain Falcon videos or like maybe the Captain Falcons at our school who um, aren't like placing as well in tournaments and I'll just like watch how they play and if they do something, even if it's like not even on purpose, like they might do something that is so strange that I'll look at it and I'm like, that makes so much sense and I'll kind of <laughs> copy it, you know, I'll take it. It doesn't matter if you know, they can beat me or if um, they can beat me in a best of three or whatnot. Like if if you can learn from you can learn from anywhere. And I feel like if you keep an open mind like that, you can improve a lot faster. So yeah. awesome. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me. And congratulations once again on graduating. Um, everyone so else. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you all next time. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff.